So, how do you resist woke? How do you quell the tide of what Charles Moore called jiggery wokery? <laughs> Solzhenitsyn had some ideas, and he actually listed them in his essay, Live Not By Lies. Firstly, don't write, sign, or publish anything that distorts the truth. Don't utter lies in private or in public conversations or read from a crib sheet. In art, paintings, photography, music, broadcast, don't support false thought or distort the truth as you understand it. Don't use other people's quotes just for the purposes of success at work unless you agree with it. Don't be forced to demonstrate uh, or rally or raise banners or say slogans that you don't believe. Don't vote for anyone that you don't sincerely support if you think that they're dubious or unworthy. Walk out of sessions, lectures, plays and films if you hear what he called ideological drivel, lies or propaganda. And don't subscribe to any newspapers that distort or hide the underlying facts. So let's translate some of these for our own time. If you get hounded by a mob, don't issue a forced false apology and grovel if you don't believe that you've said anything wrong. Don't virtue signal to win social points or cover your back by saying things that you don't believe are true, usually by posting faddish things on social media unthinkingly, just so that you can feel safe and in with a certain crowd. Don't nod along and force yourself to sit through ideological preaching or accept things like unconscious bias training if you think it's hokum. Don't let yourself feel peer pressured to go on to ideological marches or, take gest or make gestures like taking the knee because you fear that your peers will view you as a racist or a sexist or whatnot if you don't. Don't ever let your speech be compelled by social pressure. Don't take on the words, phrases and slogans of other people, piece them together and then regurgitate them. Do your own thinking, come to your own conclusions so that you know what you think. Don't let your employer or colleagues force you to do anything ideological, like putting pronouns in your email signature, if you don't want to. Try to create a situation in which your employment is secure enough that you can feel brave by joining organizations like the Free Speech Union as a kind of insurance policy. And don't betray your own conscious, conscience. Be willing to make sacrifices for the things that you believe to be true. And finally, keep an eye on your own mind and try to be as truthful and independently minded as possible, knowing where your ideas are coming from. This will stop us from sinking into the dark, chaotic bog of the metaphorical marshland. Let me read you a quote by Solzhenitsyn. He, he wrote, Let us not glue back the flaking scales of the ideology, not gather back its crumbling bones, nor patch together its decomposing garb. And we will be amazed by how swiftly and helplessly the lies will fall away. And that which is destined to be naked will be exposed as such to the world. That is the individual response. But where does the story of Alfred the Great fit in? We often look at our institutions and say, everything has gone too far, the situation is helpless. It looks like total defeat. Harmony, the harmony of the institutional ecosystem has already been completely decimated and we don't have the means to build new ones fast enough. But look around this hall. Look at those faces and look at the fact that we are all here. Over the last few years, we have seen a blossoming of all sorts of organizations, not particularly political ones, not necessarily of the right or of the left, but organizations that are devoted to free speech and debate, to liberty, to protecting our heritage, to myth-busting, and to telling the truth. Alfred the Great was successful because his powers of organization made him bigger than himself and made those who turned up at Eddington greater than the sum of their parts because he had the wisdom and the vision to think generations ahead. We live in an age of fast food, streaming, deliveroo, clicks, tweets, and instant gratification. We don't have to be atomized individuals. We can institutionalize truth, beauty, and liberty as well as speaking it. We can build, and as Ruskin said, when we build, let us build as if we build forever. Alfred didn't see his grandson crowned King of England, but he is the reason that we are standing here today celebrating the patron saint of England. 
Jordan Peterson's interpretation of St. George slaying the dragon includes the idea that in courageously facing up to dragons, there is some kind of profound reward at stake. Solzhenitsyn lays out a choice between spiritual independence or spiritual civility. It's a call to have the courage to defend your own soul. That is the reward. He said, if we shrink away, let us cease from complaining that someone does not let us draw breath. We do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves. How do you resist woke? I don't think there's an easy answer to that question. But my offering is tell the truth and build. Happy St. George's Day.